Okay, everyone ready? Radio silent. I was speaking into my stopwatch. <laughs> I'm recording. <it. laughs> All right, everyone ready? Radio silence, please. Cameras ready. Well, for starters, it's a bit slow. I mean, if I ran, it would be faster. Oh, I got him on the launch! Hello and welcome to the first ever Cars.Coza show brought to you from my lounge in the middle of a nationwide lockdown. Now I'm recording this just after President Ramaphosa went on live TV and announced an extension to the lockdown. There's no doubt about it, this is going to be a very trying and tough time for our nation. And that's why we wanted to make this show to distract you, to entertain you, to hopefully make you smile during this extraordinary time in our nation's history. Now to interact with us during the show, please use the hashtag CarsCozaShow. Myself and the team will be online at the same time to interact with you too. So get Twittering and Facebooking. Coming up on this episode, Maps Maponiane joins us to go zip lining. The BMW M5 takes on the Mercedes AMG E63. The new Toyota Supra track races the BMW M2 competition. And we spend time with one of the rarest cars on earth. But first, just before the lockdown, Honda sent me their new family car, the BRV, to review. And I didn't get a chance to film it. Hello and welcome to a basement in Cape Town. The year is 2020, it's the beginning of April and that means that just like the rest of you, I am under lockdown in South Africa. I can't exactly go out and shoot a car review. And so I'd like to present to you my basement review video of the Honda BRV. Now normally this wouldn't be too difficult, we'd head out to a country road somewhere, shoot some tracking shots, some beauty shots, some details, and I'd talk some nonsense to camera. But today, this is my crew. Yeah, so uh, just, just bear with me. And so with my excellent Casa Cosa crew staying safely at home, I had to make a plan. Check this awesome panning shot I got, and this headlight flare. This is some A-grade material right here. If I'm honest though, this became very difficult very quickly and so I went back to what I was used to, offering solid consumer advice. So what I've done to help us better understand the segment that the Honda BRV competes in is create this handy pricing board. Now I do apologize that the images are not in full color. I only had a black and white printer at home. But look, I've even included the Cars.Coza logo in the pricing sheets. It's that sort of attention to detail that we aspire to at this company. But a quick run through of the pricing, a BRV starts at 262 and the top spec is 318,000 and a Vanza 243, 289 for the top spec and an Ortega very good value at 221 or 288 for the top spec. Now the reason why there's a picture of the Toyota Rush here is because one, when I was googling Toyota Rush, I found a screen grab of myself from my own video on an Indian auto blog, which I thought was hilarious, but also because really the Avanza doesn't compete with the BRV in other markets. However, in South Africa, the Rush is only sold with five seats, which means I can't really include it here because this is a seven seat car comparison. So here we go. This is pretty much a summary of these three cars in my opinion. The Ortega is the best value for money. The Avanza is actually pretty crap and I wouldn't buy one, but it has the best badge. The Honda has the best warranty. It's the highest quality product. It's the most premium product and it's the easiest to live with. There we go. Um, I think I'm done here. Do I still have to make a video? Are we good? Okay, I'm not talking to anyone. There's no one here. A 
key difference between the BRV and rivals such as the Toyota Rush and Avanza is that the BRV has a sixth gear. Now that might sound quite trivial, but what it does in practice is when you're cruising at highway speeds, which obviously I'm not doing right now, just imagine, just imagine, it lowers the engine speed, and that's the RPM that you see on your rev counter. What that does is it makes the engine less strained and quieter. So for instance, if you're in a new Toyota Rush, and assuming you don't want an auto, you've gone for a manual, you'll be sitting in fifth gear at 120 k's an hour, and your engine will be sitting at about 4,500 RPM. And that means it sounds like a chainsaw. It's not very pleasant. Sorry, I've run out of basements. Oh, I'm just gonna do a quick three-point turn. But in the Honda, because you've got six gears, you can cruise in top gear, which reduces the engine speed, which makes it a lot more pleasant to cruise around in. Security is gonna get annoyed with me. I'm just doing loops, loops in their basement. This is actually where I've been running. So I've been doing my lockdown runs. How cool that old Land Rover is, it's beautiful convertible Defender. So the BRV is the most powerful of these three cars and interestingly it doesn't have the worst fuel consumption. It's actually second best after the Suzuki. Suzuki's generally have very very good fuel consumption. But I think that in a car like this, ran out of basements again, in a family car such as this you want a little bit of extra power and torque especially if you're looking to tow stuff around, a little trailer or a jet ski or I don't know, a pony, I don't know what people tow. But whatever your family requires, I suppose. But think about it, you're fully loaded, you've got seven people in here, all of their stuff, all of their luggage. You want a little bit of extra torque. You don't want an anemic engine trying to get up hills. That's just not going to be particularly pleasant. So all these cars have similarly sized engines, but Honda seem to have managed to crank out a little bit more power out of theirs and you can feel it <laughs> no you can't not in a basement that's for sure this is a weird day I'm having a weird day <laughs> I've been thinking to myself, what is the point of cars like the Honda BRV? And the problem is that in South Africa, nobody buys station wagons. They don't even sell them anymore. And I promise you, they're more practical than SUVs, but that's all South Africans seem to want. And so if you want a hope of selling a car like this, you have to make it look like an SUV. And I think Honda have done that pretty well but you still get all the practicality of a station wagon. In fact, I think these are more practical than station wagons. There's leg room for days in there. And if you don't need the third row of seats, take them out and then you've got one of the biggest boots that you can buy in any segment in the motoring industry. And so to a petrol head, maybe this is one of the most boring cars ever made. But if you're looking for a family car, this thing makes an enormous amount of sense. Oh, oh. Ow. too old for this and in case you were wondering how I got these drive-by shots Right, I hope I don't have to do too many more of those in my lifetime. I missed my crew, actually. But I do hope that you found it useful. And this is a good opportunity for me to tell you that most of the car dealers that we work with at Cars.coza are still fielding inquiries from home. So I assume you have a bit more time on your hands and maybe this is the perfect opportunity for you to find your next car. But as a company, we've had to make radical changes to the way we operate. Of course, every South African has had to do that. And we've been working from home for some time now, one of the results of which is what you're watching right now. 
a show from my home with whatever equipment I had on me at the time of lockdown. And that's the thing about these really difficult moments is they force you to innovate. They force you to find strength where maybe you think you didn't have it before. And as South Africans, we're very good at both of those things. And so I'm very happy to be sitting here bringing you this show. But let me stop talking. Let's get back to the films. Coming up next, a titanic battle between two German super saloons. It's a world gone mad. Thanks to all-wheel drive, these 600 horsepower saloons now reach 100 kilometers an hour from standstill in around three seconds. These are the new drag race superstars. The E63S weighs slightly more than the M5, but has 850 Newton meters of torque, 100 more than the BMW. But how would all of this translate on the quarter mile? All right, blue driver ready. Merc driver ready. Here we go. The M5 pulled ahead just after the launch and stayed ahead, but we thought the Merc didn't launch as well as it could have, so we lined up one more time. He just, just got me on the line. All that separated these two incredible cars was four hundredths of a second. You couldn't hope for a closer race than that. Classic cars, uh, yeah. They're, they're expensive, they're difficult to maintain, and they break all the time. I should know, I own one, and it's currently collecting dust in the basement at the car's office because I hit a pothole and something very expensive in the engine broke. But anyway, these cars do create a lot of joy for their owners and everyone who gets to see them. And we've been building our sentimental brand around that joy and around that community. And over the years, we've shot some incredible cars for the sentimental series on our YouTube channel. But this one, this was a real highlight. Ferrari only ever made about 1300 of these. That's it. And this was the last car ever signed off by Enzo Ferrari himself. Now to make this film, we shut down the Franschhoek Pass with the Cape Town traffic police, but you don't just sort of shut it down for the whole day and create a massive traffic jam. You get about 10 minutes at a time to get your shots and then they let cars through and you just repeat the process. It's quite a palaver, but the results, I think, well, man, here you go. I grew up in a family with cars. My uncle used to compete in club rallies and used to drag me along to the nine hours. And there for the first time I saw the red cars, the Ferraris, and that just triggered it. Any effort is very analog. There are no driver aids. It's very driver focused. You've got to be on top of things the whole time. You've got to time your gear shifts perfectly. You've got to, as they say, keep it on the boil if you really want the performance out of it. But once you get it right, 
It is just so rewarding. There is no words to describe that. And the sound, it's just amazing. <laughs> prepared if you want to drive the car and enjoy it because the pedals are close to each other. There's limited luggage space but other than that you have to really feel like driving. It's not a forgiving car. You get in, you be positive, you want to drive it. The reward is, is it's the ultimate reward. Yeah, the first drive was really something else. I was quite nervous because I had a road trip planned. So when I went back there with a friend, we got in the car and we drove 750 kilometers to the middle of France. Which was Probably not the ideal thing to do for the first time you're driving an F40. But, believe it or not, it was an amazing experience. And, um, you know, I was frowned upon when I told them what I'm going to do. But that was really the best experience of my life. My name is Davi Teron and I drive a 1989 Ferrari F40. the epitome of what Ferrari can do. It's, it's basically, to me, it showcases the essence of Ferrari. You know, it's quite raw, it's very driver focused. Obviously, I never thought I'd be able to afford it when I was in my 20s or 30s. But the opportunity came along last year. I got the call. Davi, here's a car that we think you should look at. I went over to the UK and sure enough, this car had a racing history in the UK, but it wasn't heavily modified. They basically removed the front and the rear lids in, and made it in fiberglass. The engine was stock standard, just with a modified exhaust. He raced it very successfully and he won two class championships over a period of two years. After winning the championships, the owner decided to restore the car back to original. And I saw the car in its restored condition. But on the occasion of the viewing of the car, it was raining so much that I couldn't drive the car. So, but I there and then decided this is the car that I've got to have. specific memory that I have of the car, the first drive, we did a little tour with some other like-minded guys and we went to a track called Varano. It's um, in the north of Italy, close to Parma. And you know, everybody warns you and tells you, just remember, the F40 is a bit of an animal. You've got to heat up the tires, be careful. So I said to myself, this is the first time I'm going to be on a track. I've got to be careful. But after seeing a Porsche on the track and disappearing into the distance, I couldn't help myself but 
giving chase. <laughs> myself sideways in the first hairpin as a result of a bit over eager on the throttle in second gear and that properly woke me up and then I realized okay the F40 is an animal in the same time it was very rewarding to catch it <laughs> and to live to play another day When it lets go, it's, it's quite violent. And it, um, it's, like I said, it's, it's very, it's not forgiving. You have to be very quick. But after that, I had a few, few laps and I enjoyed it. I bought a car in the UK. Um, the best I could do is bring it in on a car name. I thought about it before because, you know, it involves quite a lot of money. But then I decided one year in my life with a car in, in my country, on South African soil, you know, you make memories with a car. And it was special because I visited Swat Cops, I went to Kailami, we went to quite a few events on breakfast runs with a club. Having the bars closed, that was epic. I mean, that. And I said to my wife, you don't realize how fast you can go if you're allowed to use the whole road. The memories that I have of that was just unbelievable. <laughs> Now you must head on over to our Center Metal online shop, which you'll find at cars.coza forward slash shop. And that's where we ship all of our custom car themed merchandise to the world. Now, unfortunately, we aren't shipping during lockdown, but you can still browse the site and find stuff you like, and we'll ship it to you as soon as we can. And you can buy and download our first ever digital Center Metal magazine. I did it last night, I downloaded it. It's beautiful, highly recommend it. Now my next guest needs no introduction, but it really annoys me when you watch a talk show and the host says my next guest needs no introduction and then they spend three minutes introducing them. But really, he is one of South Africa's favorite sons and we got in touch with him and asked him if he'd like to come zip lining with us in the Cedarburg and he said yes. But I think the car that we organized for him to drive had something to do with it. My goodness. Look at this. <laughs> this hey, is man. nice. <laughs> this is, might be the most expensive Uber I've ever ordered in my life. <laughs> nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you too, man. Thanks yeah. for coming down to hang out with us. I'm excited. I mean, if we're going to hang out in a Mercedes Benz GTR, yeah, it's, we're um, just going to the shops, right? <laughs> and you're the one in charge. Uh, I kind of am, but I'm very, very happy to give you the keys. Well, give me the keys and I'll yeah. <laughs> And Maps wasted no time exploring the full power of this incredible Mercedes GTR, the most powerful AMG car on sale right now. But that was fine because we had somewhere to be. Maps didn't come down just to hang out with us and go for a drive. We were headed out of town where we had planned something exciting. So I was super interested to see, right, that you have your own Wikipedia page. For me, nothing says you've made it <laughs> than when page. you have your own Wikipedia page. <laughs> <laughs> so before you tell me about my Wikipedia page, 
I've only seen that thing once. The things that people write are hilarious. The, the one time I read, I was actually born in Sri Lanka in Colombo. Um, <laughs> but this, this kind of made me chuckle though. So it says, uh, television presenter, actor, fashion designer, speaker, model, creative consultant, voiceover artist, philanthropist, and business entrepreneur. It's like, dude, do you have like an A4 business card? <laughs> <laughs> So actually, I wanted to ask you for some advice, right? Yeah. Because you, you, you sort of know clothes, right? Yeah. And uh, like a bit of a fashion consultant. I got these in Vietnam <laughs> and uh, I'm wondering if this would take off here. So yeah. You know what? <laughs> that actually would take off because my people love watermelon. <laughs> And nothing says summer than watermelon except... So yeah. that's for you. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, that's a gift. I thought... <laughs> Guys, to all my family, if you're wondering what you're getting for Christmas, these are all getting imported from Vietnam very soon. So that's that. Maps and I are going into business and we're going to sell watermelon hats. But enough about fashion, let's talk cars. My first car was an Alfa Romeo Mito. Yeah. But I've always just been responsible enough not to buy new cars. <laughs> so I've just ended up with my car forever because I, you know, put everything, whenever there's a chance to buy a new car, yeah. I, put it, I put the money in my business instead. Nice. Yeah. Until this, this year, a, few, a couple months ago, I decided to get a C43 AMG. Nice. <laughs> and that's just been an absolute dream and beauty to drive. Yeah. It's a lot more in every single way than my Alfa Romeo Mito. That was, to have that car, as a first car for me, it was incredible to have worked like super hard to save up for it and to be able to afford what actually was my dream car at the time. Yeah. And work towards it and that's what I got. Yeah, so it so, sent something to you. Absolutely. And that's why I haven't been able to get rid of her. Her name's Adriana actually. Sexy Italian. Great <laughs> With an amazing back. Back in back styling. Back inside. <laughs> Uh, I was having a look at your Insta and I saw a, a link there for bursarynetwork.com. Yeah. Is that something you're involved in? Um, bursarynetwork.com is actually something I'm really, really passionate about. I'm one of the founders of this really cool crowdfunding website, which is a crowdfunding website for bursaries. Bursary Network uh, was part of like the, 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 the Fees Must Fall movement. Even though Fees Must Fall was a great way of raising our voices and really um, standing up for student rights. I figured why not start something that could positively contribute to students immediately and uh, then uh, that's how the crowdfunding website for the Bursary Network started. We've done a decent job. Uh, we've been around for just over a year. We have raised over 700,000 Rand and we've fully funded 17 students through Varsity. Oh, amazing. So, yeah. It's been growing nicely. I'm just hoping that in the next five years or so, we can get the number up to 250. Neither of us wanted to get out of the GTR, but duty called and after squeezing into a harness, we were ready to zip line. Hair nets are never sexy. But first, a mildly terrifying 4x4 ride up into the mountains. Alright, I think this guy might have missed his calling as a rally driver. But we survived and it was worth it. The zip lining at Cape Canopy Tours in Grebo is in a spectacular setting. Neither of us had done this before. We were about to fly across a huge canyon strapped to just one metal line. But as usual, maps looked pretty relaxed. Sorry. Getting fully strapped, all right? Yeah, yeah. Sit down. Sit down. Yeah. And further back a bit. And further no, back. Me. Right side? No, the right side. Sir. Okay. Okay. Ready? Three, two, one, enjoy. Woo! Ciao. That felt very fast. That was a fast one.
Over the next few hours, we zipped across some of the most incredible scenery the Western Cape has to offer, which gave us plenty of time to chat. I'm not sure when Maps gets any sleep, as he's also currently presenting a TV show. The show I'm hosting right now is called Hangman. Yeah. It's a business show. Hangman it's basically uh, The Apprentice and Shark Tank and uh, Dragon's Den all, all, okay. all meet each other, except it only looks for innovation. So we're trying to find South Africa's greatest innovators. And if your idea is innovative enough or your concept or something you've created is innovative enough, um, then you win a million rand. So it's been really, really cool working on that. But um, wow. I'm, a bit of a, I'm a bit of a hard ass when it comes to business and entrepreneurship and stuff. And you'll see in the show, it comes across quite a bit. We're coming in hot right here. <laughs> wow! It turns out ziplining isn't scary at all. It's an exciting and unique way to explore what must be some of South Africa's most dramatic landscapes. And it's just over an hour outside Cape Town. But it was time to head home, and that of course meant climbing back into the GTR. Thank you very much for, for coming along for the trip. You know, this is a typical Saturday in Cape Town. <laughs> um, kind of. It was a nice little thrilling day. Yeah. And it was great to be driving this awesome machine here. Jeez. Yeah, no, no offense to zip lining or Cape can Canopy tours, but I feel like this gave me the most adrenaline <laughs> of anything else that happened today. <laughs> that, that does say a lot about my driving. Big shout out to Mubs for coming to hang out with us and from one restaurant owner to another. I just want to wish you all the best, wishing you strength during this lockdown and for when you reopen your businesses. Now we did have something big to celebrate during the lockdown. Our YouTube channel ticked over and hit 200,000 subscribers. Oh, it was very exciting. We had a company-wide Zoom call. We we're all online. I popped some champagne. It was a very nice moment. And we just want to say a huge thank you to all of you for helping us get there. And we can't wait to get back out into the real world and make films like this again. This is a BMW versus a BMW. Oh, I had to make that joke. I'm really, really sorry. But it's the Toyota Supra. Supra? Ash always shouts at me. Which one is it? Supra. Supra. It's the new Toyota Supra versus the BMW M2 competition. One hot lap track battle. So let me take you through some of the stats here. The cheaper car, interestingly, is the M2 competition, just over a million rand. The Supra that we have here today is the more expensive one. You can get one for under a million, but the one we have is about 50K more than the M2 competition. Of course, the jokes about the BMW come from the fact that Z4 and Supra are pretty much the same car. Right, here we go. One lap, hot lap. The M2 is going first. Ash, give me a thumbs up. I'm very excited. All right, Ash, in five, four, three, two, one, go. And he's off. Oh, geez, I was snaking a little bit off the line. <laughs> Sand on the apex of turn one makes it extremely exciting. Now to turn two, you know, I find an apex here, it's very slippery on exit. Winter is a, a tricky time to drive on track here at Kilani, everything's full of dew. It's nice and Skittish, but always picks up an apex, which is great. So let me tell you why we 
we're sending the M2 out first. It's because the Supra is kind of the underdog here. It is lighter and it is a proper sports car as opposed to a sports coupe, I suppose you could call it. But it has about 50 kilowatts less power and about 50 Newton meters less torque. Interestingly, the engines are very similar, but they're not the same motors. They are both sourced from BMW, obviously, and the M2 has the engine from the current sort of outgoing M3. Here it comes. That's very fast. You can almost feel the pressure change in your pants. That, that came out wrong. Okay, Ash, uh, give me a time when you're ready there, man. On a very slippery Kilani, we've done a 129.0. Is that a 129 flat, Ash? Exactly, 129 dead. Alrighty, there is the time to beat. Somebody get the Supra. And in five, four, three, two, one, go. And he's away in a blaze of Japanese combined with German fury. That is actually quite a nice noise. I wasn't expecting that. It actually sounds more like a BMW than the BMW, which is a bit awkward. Going into turn one, there's still a ton of sand down here, which is making finding an apex exciting. And now we're out, flat out, down to turn two. This is way more balanced, it's much easier to drive fast, I can already tell that. Nice and early on the power, there's better traction here. That M2 is just a little bit difficult to get going under power. This is much easier to power on. But I can feel the grunt out of the corners isn't quite there. Brakes definitely aren't as good as the M2s. Come on, let's hunt down a line here. Time is looking good, come on. Come on! Here we go. Here comes the Supra. And that looks good. That looks good. Ash, when you are ready, Khoi for me a time. For our international audience, Khoi means throw. I have for you a 128.0. <laughs> With less power and less torque. The Toyota has beaten the BMW. <laughs> I'm, I'm quite surprised. That is a great result. Nice driving, Ash. Thank you very much. So the M2 comp ran early in the morning. The Supra ran after it. And while we were faffing with our cameras, Ashley got on the radio and said to me, Chiro, I wouldn't mind another go in the M2. The track's dried up a bit. I think it would be fairer conditions if we ran the M2 again. So Ash, I've just explained to our lovely audience what's happened. I need you to give me your second time in the M2 comp. All right, M2 again. Yes, M2 now, the similar conditions to the Supra. So 127.7. Wow, oh, that is unbelievably close. <laughs> Wow, okay, so just three tenths separates them. And do, do you now think that that is a accurate representation of these two cars? Yeah, that's fair. I think, I think like if you had all day and all loads of tires, you could get this into a little quicker, but like a one lap shootout, yeah. that's probably as close as you can get them. And why do you think the Supra is able to overcome its power deficit so much? I think it's, it's much easier to drive, eh? This, this thing is a handful. There's just so much torque, it wants to kick out. Every time you go near the throttle, actually, it wants to, wants to try and kick out the tail. And it's a little bit difficult to drive. The Supra, you can get in, hammer it straight away from lap one. I was able to do 128s pretty much from the get-go. And you think it's lower center of gravity, a little bit more setup, you know, you can attack the corners? 
Yeah, it's you definitely feel that there's not so much weight. Also, I really do think the big thing is the power and the torque deficit. It it's it suits the car better, whereas the M2 probably suited the older engine. As now, it really is just a wild machine. <laughs> Alrighty, there we go. A twist in the tail, a slightly different result, and I think a completely fair result as well. Three tenths between those two cars. To be honest, for me, the Supra is the star of the show here. There we go, that's it. That is the end of our very first ever episode. I had fun, I enjoyed that. I hope you did too. That was that was good for me. I just wanted to say before I go from everyone at cars.coza, thank you very much for supporting us. And we will be doing everything humanly possible to contribute positively to the fight against COVID-19. To everyone at home, everyone in South Africa, everyone watching from around the world, stay safe, stay home, look after yourselves and each other. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you same time, same place next week.